this thing on? Great. Just how far would you go to connect with other people? This is Alanis Morissette hand in my pocket and I'm sorry for what's about to happen. Singing karaoke to a room full of strangers in an outback town, sober, may seem extreme. But for this story, I've gotten way out of my comfort zone. We're coming in. And and coming in for some free hugs. I've cuddled complete strangers, accosted locals in the outback, and tried to make friends with people I found on a website. All of this to try and understand what experts have called our next big public health crisis. So what have I learned? Well, loneliness kills. You can die. It's just as risky as uh, physical inactivity, smoking, alcohol, or obesity. So we can call it a health crisis, but let's call it a loneliness crisis. Half of us feel lonely at least one day a week, and one in four Australians feel lonely most of the time. Even worse, 1.5 million people have been feeling lonely for a decade or more. I know what you're thinking. In a world where we're more connected than ever, why are so many people struggling with loneliness? Well, it turns out that the type of people who suffer from loneliness might surprise you. I don't think it's surprising at all. I've gone to music events on my own, I've gone to films on my own, just to see who I can strike up a conversation with. I do have quite an intense profession working in construction. I've got lots of projects on the go constantly and it can be difficult to make plans outside of work hours. Gemma is young, smart and successful and she's lived and worked all around the world. I think with social media, for example Facebook, it helps me to feel connected. But I think within a city, people need to go beyond those apps. I find that if you rely on your work connections, often it doesn't eventuate into close friendships because they already have their own social circles. You don't often think about uh, how solid your friendships are in that respect. Professor Adrian Franklin is someone who does think about that a lot. In fact, he's made a career out of it. A lot of people think loneliness is not having lots of people in your life. But actually, loneliness is uh, when people lack high quality, meaningful or strong relationships. And also, whether they've lost a sense of belonging to something. It could be their family, it could be a workplace. Are there common triggers for loneliness in people's lives? Of the 25 to 44 year old Australians, we found that these were actually the most lonely groups of all. Why is that? Well. They are in and out of jobs constantly. They're having to work very, very hard to pay for their very expensive Australian house with the killer one, which is high rates of separation and divorce. That's why they are the most lonely group. They're more lonely than the retired. They're more lonely than the very old. It turns out there are lots of women like Gemma in Canberra trying to make meaningful connections and they're finding each other via a website called Meetup. Meetup is like a dating app but for friends. These girls are pretty <laughs> open about why they're going online to find friends. I had some friends visit from Sydney and they thought, oh, you're a little bit lonely in Canberra, you're not making that many friends. Try um, Meetup and see how you go. They said, they told you, you need to go make more friends. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> so I went on Google and asked Google how to make friends in Canberra. And I'm just searching for work, so I don't have a friend from work yet. Mm. For me, it wasn't actually difficult. I'm used to Tinder dating. Yeah. <laughs> so from Tinder to meet up, it's, you know, it's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There are times where I still experience loneliness in Canberra, but I think the more distractions you have in life, the less time you have to feel lonely. So things like moving to a new place, working a lot and relying on social media is making us lonely. But the woman I'm about to meet says the connection we're missing isn't just social, it's also physical. Go, please sit down. Thank you. Every day you are touch deprived is another day on your back. You know, it's, uh, you become more shy and more distant from other people. Jasmina is a professional cuddler, 
which is a thing that, until today, I had no idea existed. The cuddle party is very interesting thing. So it's completely platonic, and that is not a kind of hookah party. It is just to learn and explore touch of other person. Come and have a cuddle. There's something really nice about someone running their hands through your hair. Jasmina says she gets clients of all ages and backgrounds coming to her cuddle parties. They can be people working for government, they can be musicians, can be teachers, police force. Oh, that's nice. How many of your clients would you say are quite lonely? I would say all of them. Yeah, wow. You just suddenly you sit back and you reflect on your life and you think, well, I used to be happier at another time as someone who's a father and then all of a sudden they grow up, you know, and suddenly like you're not getting cuddles. You've nailed that head patting business. <laughs> I've been kind of torturing myself by isolating myself, <laughs> not giving myself what I need and I, I need, need what these guys are having. <laughs> so, in case you're wondering, there are rules at a cuddle party, one of which stood out. So I noticed that rule number eight is relax and don't worry if you get turned on. Can you explain this rule to me? It's normal that those uh, things are happening. If they were not, I would be worried actually. So if it happens, the story is we just don't act on it, you know, and it will go. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that sorted, I was ready to give it a try. Okay, I'm coming in. I'm and coming in for some free hugs. Free hugs. Free hugs. Yeah. Free hugs. <laughs> and I have to admit, at the start, it was as awkward as I imagined it would be. But pretty soon, I was getting into it. A lot. I think in general life, often I am terrified and quite anxious. But there is a reassuring aspect to being touched by people and to having people respond to your touch. Look, I might not make cuddle parties a regular part of my weekend, but I did make a few friends. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> so far, Jasmina and the cuddlers, Gemma and the meetup girls, they're all very proactive about staving off loneliness. But what about when loneliness becomes so crippling you can't even leave the house? I didn't speak to anyone for over a week at one stage. I wasn't leaving the house at all. I, was, I got to the point where I was nearly talking to myself. For two years, the only time Alan would leave the house was to buy groceries and check the mail. But his life wasn't always like this. When his grandpa fell sick a few years ago, Alan moved states, leaving his son, job and friends behind to become a live-in carer. He passed away in his sleep. Oh, I was devastated, just like... He was like the main person in my family that really cared. And that's why I came across the country to, to help look after him. So at that point, who did you have to look out for you? Pretty much myself. I thought, oh, I've got big shoulders. I've taken a lot over my life, over my time, so I can, I can handle this. But I just couldn't. You don't want to be seen as being a softie. Australian men, in our survey, we asked them what did they do when they became seriously lonely? And we gave them a list of things. Go to see your GP, talk to your family. There was about 10 items on the list. Almost no Australian man ticked any of them. And Australian women ticked most of them. When people were seriously lonely, it was like they were locked out of their own lives. They felt that they'd become invisible. No one saw them anymore. And they start to withdraw they start to get depressed, and they start to become sick. I got really weak, and suffered with bad headaches. Oh, I went for about three days without no sleep. They diagnosed me with anxiety and depression. Some people say that if you're feeling lonely or, or isolated, that you've got to just get out and go and meet people. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that at all. <laughs> they hear that so often that they get so fed up with hearing it because it's much deeper and more complicated than that. It's not as easy just to go out and meet new people and sit down and talk to people. Uh, you just don't... I just didn't feel like doing anything. Alan's story is pretty heartbreaking. And all the solutions I've looked at so far 
Cuddle parties or online friend finders won't really work with someone who can't even leave the house. So is there something that could? Hello, friend line, Nicholas speaking. <laughs> oh, you reckon you could teach me? I don't know. I'm a bit, I'm a bit slow on the uptake with games. Laura Rowan runs Friendline, a national volunteer-run hotline for lonely people looking for someone, anyone, to talk to. We're not counselling people, we're not giving advice, we're not trained psychologists, although some people have a background in psychology and counselling. We're literally just a conversation. So kind of think about it as a have a cuppa and a chat. Laura has arranged for me to talk to one of their regular callers. Hi, David, it's Laura here. How are you going? Hi, Laura. Tell me a little bit about yourself. OK, no worries. I live in St Kilda. I live in uh, community housing. David is a computer programmer, but lately his health has made working impossible. Also, he has Asperger's, which he says means it's hard for him to make and keep friends. What's the, the most kind of lonely that you have felt? Well, I mean, you know, very lonely, especially uh, around holiday time. One in four Australians are lonely. So, somebody we know. Over 70% of people said it's difficult to admit to being lonely. So we know there's a huge stigma around it as well. Friendline gets dozens of calls a night from all around the country. And whilst the vast majority of Australians live in major cities, Laura says about half of their calls are from regional areas. So, I've come to Outback New South Wales to find out why so many people here are lonely. There's 18,000 people living in Broken Hill, which is about 250 times less than Melbourne or Sydney. So does living in a smaller community make us feel closer and therefore less lonely? Oh, it's a great community. Um, yeah, I, I guess because it's so small, everybody knows everybody. Everyone seems to know everyone, but I feel like if you're on the outside, then you can be quite lonely. You're so isolated in a lot of areas. If you haven't got a licence or, you know, a way of getting around, yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a few lonely people. There's a lot of people around here like that there. I'm sort of lonely myself. I was by myself for about 18 or so months and it was extremely lonely. It's a situation Alan knows all too well. Broken Hill is his adopted hometown. Well, they say in a small town everyone knows each other and everyone helps each other. That's wrong. Yeah, I do think it is easier for people to slip through the cracks in smaller towns. A few years ago, Jenna realised that loneliness was driving people in Broken Hill to utter desperation. They were presenting to the hospital, especially after hours and weekends. That's a really sad thing to think that when people are lonely, they're presenting to a hospital emergency room. When I was really lonely, I'd go to the hospital and I, I would, you know, stay there for six weeks and then come home. And it's just, your head is filled with so much stuff that you have to release it. After divorcing his partner, Jason had a breakdown. He moved to Broken Hill for a fresh start, but found himself completely alone. When I came here to Broken Hill, I was diagnosed with bipolar. A good team. 10, 11 years, I've felt that um, I've had nothing. Hey, Alan. Hey, Dave. Coming? What saved Jason from complete isolation was meeting Alan. You want to play some games? Yeah. So he was sort of a, a person who was withdrawn too, but he's come out of his shell quite a fair bit since he's been at this program. It's amazing how much um, people, people have come out of their shells. They met at a group called Connections, set up specifically for lonely people in town. It's a free program run by Mission Australia and New South Wales Health that gets people out of the house and interacting with the world. So I go to pretty much every Connections group that's running. I say my um, anxiety's a lot better than what it was before I went to Connections. Loneliness can be linked to the early onset of mental health issues. I believe addressing loneliness is an early intervention strategy into reducing mental health in Australia. We do need to look after the individual. We need to help them. But there's something that I think governments should be doing. 
we're not doing anywhere near as much as some countries. Britain, well, uh, it's got six million people who have got loneliness as a problem. They've now got a minister with a minister's portfolio. The Minister for Loneliness would be fantastic. I think there has to be a top-down as well as a bottom-up approach as well. So national leadership. Until that national leadership arrives, Jenna and her team are making pretty big strides. The head of mental health at the local hospital says that some Connections clients have reduced their time at the hospital by 65% in just six months. So it's not enough to prove that it cures loneliness, but I think it does show that when people are engaged in meaningful activity and connections with other people, that it is really good for their own mental health. We do activities such as going out for lunch, going to art galleries, art lessons, poetry nights, karaoke. Sing on. Come on, A few months ago, getting up and singing in front of people would have been unimaginable for Alan. Have you sung karaoke before? No, no. I'm a bit nervous about the karaoke, but I think I'll get up and give it a go. A young boy, two hands on the wheel. I can't replace the wheel. God, I don't really know myself now. I've changed radically, drastically. Make it what he'd say. I smile a lot, lot more. I talk a lot more. Just a leg link across the yellow belt. Being here with um, these guys. To me, these guys are family, and, and I love that about them. Which brings us back to this moment. I'm broke, but I'm happy. I'm poor, but I'm kind. I'm short, but I'm healthy, yeah. If this journey has taught me anything, it's that turning this loneliness crisis around is going to take a lot of work. Now everything's gonna be quite all right. As individuals, as communities, and as a country. But it's work we have to do. Great guy.